We're going to be in Luke chapter 11 and James 1 this morning. And again, good morning to everybody that has um, tuned in this morning. Just going to drop by briefly. Just drop by briefly this morning um, to share a, a thought with you that the Lord just placed in my spirit to be able to share with us. We're going to use two texts of scriptures this morning, and it's going to be one out of Luke chapter 11 and one out of James chapter 1. Luke chapter 11 and James chapter 1 is where I'm going to come out of. I'm going to start in Luke 11. I'm going to grab out of Luke 11 first this morning. Luke chapter 11 is going to be first this morning. Luke chapter 11, and let's get verse, uh, where do we want to get first? Let's get verse, um, let's see, let's get, I want to say we want to get verse 28 first. Luke chapter 11 and verse 28. And let me give y'all the focus thought, because on Tuesday mornings what happened is, is for those of you that may be, uh, joining in with us for the first time on every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. We are afforded to be able to come together for corporate prayer. And so what happens is, is when you understand the context of prayer, prayer has to have a focus. What that means is, is whatever it is that you are petitioning God for, that is your focus. And what, what happens is, and what brings a strength to you is, is when you have scripture that will accommodate your focus. The Lord says this in his word. I want to say it's in Malachi. He says, bring, uh, bring these things to my remembrance. The Lord loves when we come to him with his word, because that means that we have paid attention to him and we have carefully sought out and thought out the things that we're bringing to him. And so when you attach his word to your prayers, it just gives it that much more power because the enemy cannot stand against the word of of the Lord. And so what happens is, is there is a prayer focus that is given and then we govern it with the word of the Lord and then we um, say our prayer. So that's how we go about on Tuesday morning. So it is a time of collectively coming together. If you're not able to submit your prayer requests between 7 and 7.05, you can still just place them in the atmosphere. It is a governing atmosphere, which means that it is going to connect to the things that you are trusting the Lord for according to his will. Now, it's only going to connect to things that are according to God's will. So you can't be asked, you know, you can't throw it in the atmosphere and ask us to, to govern a prayer request that uh, is not according to something that God would even do. But if it be according to the Lord's will, then it is governed or it is protected in the time that we spend in prayer. So we're going to get into the word of the Lord this morning, and then we're going to uh, call forth in the spirit of prayer. So we're in Luke chapter 11 this morning, and the focus thought that we're going to have for this week is this right here. Put some action to it. That's what the Lord told me to talk about this morning. Put some action to it. That's our focus thought, because many a times we, you know, we, um, we hear things, but we do not put action to it. Well, the Lord wants to deal with us concerning the fact of us putting some action to it. Um, we need to put some actions to some action to some things, and not only just um, hear some things, but put some action to it. You know, let's let's put some action to it. You know how there have been um, several, you know, certain things that we've heard, but we don't get up and do anything about it. So let's. Um, Let's put some action to it. All right, so give me just one second. I got a problem right here with one of my, um, but I'm about to fix it right quick. All right, and so Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11 and verse 28 says this right here. It says, but he said, and it's talking in reference to Jesus. It says, but he said, yeah, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So there are two different things that is taking place right here. 
It says they hear the word of the Lord and they keep it. But I want to trigger y'all with one word. There's one other word I want to trigger y'all with. And that's this word blessed. It says blessed are they. Blessed means empowered to succeed. So whenever you hear the word of the Lord and keep it. Now to keep means that you you don't dis, you don't discard it you you become a hoarder of it which means you will not let it go you will not release it you have to become a hoarder of the word of the lord so it says empowered to succeed are they that hear the word of god and keep it so they hear it in the context hearing means that it is caught or captivated in their understanding there is a revelation that is attached to it, which means that you take this word personal. As soon as you hear it, you know, whoa, that's mine right there. I'm not releasing that. I'm not letting that go. I am hoarding that. I am not. I refuse to let it go. So now with the understanding that empowered to succeed, let me read it to you again. Blessed, it says, but he said, yea, rather, empowered to succeed are they that hear or put action to the word of God and keep it. So they don't release it. It gives a blessing. It is going to increase. It is going to empower them. There's nothing worse than somebody saying something, but then do not put action or it's as though they do not hear you when you're talking. What we usually do when it seems as though people don't hear us is, is we get an octave louder because we think that there is something wrong with the hearing. It's not always that something is wrong with the hearing, y'all. A lot of times is something wrong with the action is something that is going on there is something called fear that will paralyze you and keep you from producing a action there is something called rebellion that will cause you to not produce a action and but if you do not produce an action what happens is is you lose the empowerment to succeed god i love you this morning you lose the empowerment to succeed do you understand and hear what it means empowered to succeed that means success is yours baby there is nothing that can keep you from success except for the fact that you do not put no action to it if you do not get out and move if you do not allow Allow it to provoke you, motivate you to get to where you need to be. If you just sit there at a standstill and don't do nothing, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. If you don't do nothing, then there is not going to be any type of success or progression. It empowers you to succeed. I just want to read it one more time. Luke chapter 11 and verse 28. But he said, yea, rather... Empowered to succeed are they that put action to the word of God and keep it. They hoard it. It means that I'm not just doing it one time, but it has now become a continual fashion about my life. This is not something, God, I love you this morning. This is not something that I'm just going to do this week and then don't do it anymore. So I'm not going to uh, invest in the business, but don't work the business. You see what I'm talking about? See, you've got to continue at it. You've got to set up a plan, a strategy. Lord, help me this morning. You've got to get some momentum behind you. And what it says is uh, the empowerment comes from the fact that you have the word of the Lord. What is the word of the Lord that will empower you? Well, when you know that the word of the Lord says things like this right here, that I am the head and not the tail. Uh, that is an empowering word. When the word of the Lord says to you that I can do all things through Christ, uh, which strengthens me, that is uh, an empowering word right there that will cause you to be blessed uh, and it will cause you to be empowered to succeed. When you understand that uh, the Lord says this, uh, that nothing shall be withheld from them that walk upright. That's an empowering word right there. When the word says that, uh, oh Lord, have mercy when it says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow that's an empowering word right there God help me on this morning that's an empowering word right there and it is the type of word that we're talking about this morning that says put some action to it now let's run over to James chapter 1 James chapter 1 
James chapter 1, and let's pick up at around verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22, this morning we're talking about put some action to it, baby. It's doing you no good just sitting there. Every now and then, I like to go through my place, and if it's some stuff I'm not using, then I'd like to get rid of it because I've conditioned or trained myself to, to say, listen, girl, you know if you ain't used that or you done forgot you even had it, then that means that it, it it's really not holding any type of a value for you, you know, so go ahead and get rid of it, and maybe there's somebody that can use it in this season, and it will be such a great blessing uh, for them. Now, see, this is the thing about the word of the Lord, you know, that has a twofold to it. When you, you have to hoard the word of the Lord, which means that you keep it for references anytime that you need it, but you also express out of that that you have. See, when you talk concerning the word of the Lord, it is an expression out of that which you have. It's not that you're giving it away, but you are expressing the benefits. You are letting the people know that the word of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord works for me. You know, the word of the Lord has literally changed my life. So it gives a motivation. It gives an encouragement to others to attach themselves to it. Now you still possess it for the time that you need it, but you are expressing the goodness of it. You are sharing the goodness of it. It would be a situation as if I was uh, to talk about something that I have gotten myself, if I connect to and become a part of some type of business, and I get and I talk about it, I share about it, uh, I am expressing the goodness of it. uh, I'm I'm literally hoarding the fact that I have it, which means I'm not going to let it go because I love it and I, I'm gleaning from it. I'm benefiting from it, but I'm going to express the fact that I love it so that others can try it out. Others can connect to it. So it is an empowerment to succeed that comes when we allow the word of the Lord to be that particular thing for us in our lives. So put some action to it. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Put some action to it. Don't just sit and hear the word of the Lord. Don't just engage in uh, messages as they are going forth, but don't do anything with them. Holy Spirit, I love you this morning. Don't just sit around and be one that gets fat on the word of the Lord, but put not a bit of action to it. Don't have any type of motivating drive. The word of the Lord is to motivate. It is the word of the Lord that gets me up every day with a run in my spirit. It is the word of the Lord that drives me to do the things that I do. Why? Because the word of the Lord will cause you to pursue. It will cause you to be after the things that you know the Lord has destined your life for. The word of the Lord lets you know the picture. It is the crystal ball, so to speak, that shows you the picture of what God wants to do. And then you have to put action to your feet and your movement in order to get the things. Well, what happens with a lot of us is uh, is we exemplify such laziness uh, and such an unappreciation for the word of the Lord because we expect God to show us what he wants. uh, And then we expect God to cause the things that he wants to happen in our lives. Well, we act like we're doing God a favor by lending ourselves to him. I'm lending myself to you. So then you do it, God. You want my life to be a particular way where you do it. Well, I don't know how many of you have paid attention to the fact that what you want for your life may be completely opposite of what God wants for your life. You ought to really be scared of what you want for your life because I haven't seen very many things that I have wanted for my life uh, that have really ended up to be beneficial. Uh, I have wanted things and wanted people in my life uh, uh, that was only a hurt and a torture and torment for me. Uh, I have wanted things based a lot of times off of image uh, because of how I wanted to look in particular people's eyes uh, and because I was worried about the view uh, of what I looked like to folks. So it made me want some things uh, that I sometimes wasn't even mature enough for. It made me want some things that I sometimes didn't even need to have inside of my life. So I found out a good while ago that Delphine, it would be best for you, girl, to just want what God wants for you because God knows what's best for you. You will allow yourself to hook up 
with some folk just because uh, he got some good biceps as